Hello, everybody. I'm Madame Sensei. I teach Spanish, French, and Japanese to high schoolers out here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. And I'm going to tell you about one of my favorite Minecraft education activities. And if you want to help me make up some of these, meet me at the Minecraft Education Ambassadors or the Minecraft Teachers Lounge. So I'm telling you about uh, this virtual field trip I took a few of my classes on, and it was absolutely wonderful. This episode, I'm just going to go over the basics because I'm probably going to go over 10 minutes discussing this, and then I'll take you to the various worlds that we used. All right, so first of all, I searched online for pictures of plane tickets, and I chose my two favorite two that, I, that looked like, hey, I could doctor these up and I can print them up. So first thing I did was I covered over the name that was there and I covered over the date. Here's the, the flight number and the date and the name. And the name also goes here. And then I just, with a little paint program, which is my active inspire, I could just fill in the, oops, that, sorry, that's the flight there. Fill in the name easily, fill in the date. And I did this for all 136 students. And it was pretty amazing. And then uh, here, I'll put another one over here for this. And what I didn't do was I didn't think about the seat number, but now I know for next year, because immediately when they got the tickets, they were looking at their seat numbers to see if they were sitting next to their friends. And so I should have, I mean, it took a long time to do this because I had to like put all the names in and everything. I should have taken the extra 10 minutes to put the seat numbers in because it would have made a big, di like the students would have loved it. And I really wanted this to feel like an actual field trip. Um, so I did all this before the students, like the students did not know I was doing this. Okay. Then I printed maps. So I went online and I found, um, it's the clear, like, you know, I only have black and white photocopier. So it had to be something that could photocopy. Well, this one was a little too, um, complicated. I decided, so I used a different one, but, um, this is pretty good. And I filled it in with some words. Okay. And I wrote big books. So you can check out my glad I'll link to that in the description. Uh, discussing the big book, the GLAD technique. And so I wrote these very simple big books uh, about, hey, this is what the city has in it. This is this place in the city. This is this place in the city. This, this is a fact about this city. And then I took every single sentence from the big book that we had read three or four times in class, five times in class. I took every single sentence and I gave each sentence to a different NPC that I had sprinkled throughout the city. So, you know, the point of the big books is for the students to read them over and over and over again. What better way to read them over and over again than to have all that exact sentence embedded in the NPCs that the students are going to interact with? Okay, so then I made airport announcements because I knew the Minecraft, I can't put sounds in, but I needed, I needed, you know, the airport to feel like an airport. So first I played with Speechify. And I'm a poor teacher, so I only have the free Speechify. And uh, frankly, I didn't like it as much. I would have to constantly um, c copy, cut, and paste the dialogue into speech and Speechify each day that I wanted to do this, and then leave it open in the background. And um, I couldn't slow the voices down, and I didn't. And the voices weren't anything special for the free version. And so I just went back to Pixay, which I love to pieces, and Pixay the. Uh, uh, the link will be in the description. Peak say right now is being neglected because Hugo is putting all of his efforts into Roxem and Roxem's really amazing. You should check that out too. But I love Peak say. Peak say does everything I wanted to do. So you can see here's my airport um stuff. I white zone and red zone, so they can argue with each other about what's going on, you know. And that's just going on in the background while the students are exploring the um the airport because they have to go to the airport first for it to feel like a field trip. So um, before I even told the students what we were doing, I said, hey, we're going on a field trip. You're going to need to know how to get around the airport. And I made blue kits with uh, this, is my Spanish and this, is my French and Japanese. I haven't done yet because I didn't find a good Minecraft world yet. And I'll talk about that coming up. But uh, I've got those up there if you want them. And then the blue kits are just basically, you know, hey, what's this thing? And there's no English in them at all. I kept them in the target language. Okay. Um, and they're mostly, they're all multiple choice. I didn't do any writing on this because I just want the students to be able to recognize these places in the airport. Uh, I made blue kits focusing on the landmarks that the students are going to see when they get to Buenos Aires or when they get to, um, uh, Paris. Okay. And I'm going to 
give specific videos about this with more information, but like, here's a picture. What is this? Oh, it's the Champ de Mar. Okay. And then I think I've got one for Buenos Aires. Yeah, here. Um, uh, la Avenida Nueve de Julio es la avenida más grande del mundo. Okay. So here we were practicing. This is my Spanish one class. We were able to do this. It was so amazing, but we're practicing adjectives. So I just switched out the adjectives. So that was fun. Okay, now, you know I make a lot of card games, okay, because if you watch my other playlist about making games for the World Language Classroom, a lot of my games are card games, and I have all these leftover scraps as I'm cutting out the cards, because, you know, sometimes I have odd number of cards to cut out or whatever, and I've got all these leftover scraps, and I've been saving them just in case. I guess I'm a hoarder, I don't know, but I was like so happy that I had these just in case, because these were perfect. All right, so... Normally, I only teach my Japanese students origami, but I thought I'm going to teach everybody origami because of my idea. So I used the um, the GLAD pictorial input chart technique, which, as I explained in my GLAD um, playlist, I can't put giant posters up on my wall. I teach three languages, and next year I'm going to teach four because I've been asked to take an English class also. So there's no real estate in my room. My walls are all covered with conjugation charts and rejoinders and um, questions and uh, supports and pictures of Tantan and um, pictures of, of Full Metal Alchemist. You know, they, they, I, it's the stuff that the students need to look at, okay? So there's no room for anything else. There's no room for a pictorial input chart, especially given that I'd have to take it down and put up a new one for the next class and take that down and put up a new one for the next class. No, there's just no room for that. So I've been doing my pictorial input charts where all the students are drawing at the same time and I love that so much. So I taught them a very simple origami and like about halfway through this, they realized, oh, are we making envelopes? Yeah. Okay. So I had to make envelopes and then I taught them the word for suitcase and they had to draw a suitcase on the outside of the envelope. And then I put this up and I would pull out this. Okay. Que necesitan en sus maletas. And then I would just draw right in front of the students. Oh, uh, yo necesito una camisa. And I'd start drawing. I'm drawing with a mouse right now, so that's really bad. My drawing is even worse than normal. And so I'm just talking to my students in Espanol or, or en Francais, or I also, we made the suitcase, Nihongo Day. And so I'm just narrating in the target language and drawing. And then the students have the colored markers and the scraps of cardboard in front of them, the, the cardstock. And so they start drawing on it. And um, they they figure it out. I mean, we've done this a lot, so so they know. But um, the students will figure it out pretty quickly with you just drawing on the board and, you know, motioning to them to pick up the markers and the, the paper and holding up the, the cardstock and everything. So they, they drew their clothing and then they packed their suitcases. But it's for each of these, let me go back here. I had a choice. Okay. They don't have to draw every single one of these. It's just like, what do you want to take? Okay. Um, uh, es junio is June. Necesitan ustedes un suéter? No, no necesitamos un suéter, right? So, but it was okay. It was whatever they wanted to do. So these are all the, the shoe possibilities. So I drew them all, but the students only needed to draw whichever one shoe they wanted to take. And they had to label it too, okay? So I drew, you know, do you want jeans? Do you want pants? Do you want shorts? Uh, we had a good discussion in French about how you can pack shorts if you want, but everyone's going to make fun of you. Nobody wears shorts in France, in Paris in the fashion capital of the world. Nobody wears shorts. Okay. So, you know, I'd let them choose. Do they want a jacket? Do they want a coat? Do they want a heavy winter coat? And we talked about that. So we got all that in. This was really fun. And you can see here, I had them label it. They had to label everything. Okay. I found this absolutely beautiful airport and I'm going to take you there in the next episode. And I'm already almost at 10 minutes. I can see, um, Gregoris gave me this great airport. And I went into world builder mode and I had a little trouble because there's something called a JSON file and Luke helped me break it so that I could do stuff with the world. And I changed the dialogue. I changed one airport to French, one to Spanish, one to Japanese. And I will show you that next episode. There's a mini game. I'll explain that later because I'm running out of time. So then I passed out plane tickets 
and I printed them on cardstock so they would feel like really substantial. And I had printed my maps and I folded my maps in thirds. And yes, this took time. But man, I just, I loved seeing the expressions on my students' faces. And I really wanted this to feel like an actual field trip. So they all got a map. Okay, you can see for the Buenos Aires one, I kind of highlighted where we were going to go. All right. And then first we went on the plane, and I'm going to show you that the next video. Okay, but look at this beautiful airport. This was, this was so much better than I could have done myself. And I labeled all the places. Okay, so the students would know what they're doing. Um... And then just before, when we got off the plane, I taught, that's when I taught my students how to use the book and quill. And I will show you that, uh, in the next video also. Okay. So the next episode, my adventures with the book and quill, I went just over 10 minutes. All right. Next one will be shorter. See you then.